welcome to On the Edge. Brains, you back at the spot, the place where the conversations are pointed and the guests are sharp, the responses are never dull. Today we have Fantasia Ivy. We like to call her Ivy. And she is an entrepreneur. And she's an entrepreneur that is coming out with a very unique subscription service. Now, you know, they got the food that comes to your house, your clothes come to your house, uh, the pet groomer comes to your house, but feminine hygiene coming to your house on a regular basis. Uh, if you are a woman with a uterus, believe and trust, you will appreciate this and the value in that. But how she came up with this business model, this paradigm, and the additional services that she is offering. We're going to talk to her about that. Um, and we're just excited to have her here. She's all the way from uh, Douglasville, Georgia, right? Yes, that is where I'm located. <laughs> now, how far is Douglasville from Atlanta? I'm not. It's about thirty Georgia. minutes. Yeah, thirty minutes. It's on the outskirts. Yeah. Okay. Well, you on the inskirts. Tell my brains, Ivy, how to get in contact with you and and how you show up in the world. Yes, well, in order to get in contact with me, uh, number one, you can find our website at www.iwellness.store. Also on all social media platforms, we are iwellness.co. Okay, and in regards to how we got started, <laughs> this is such a funny story. Okay, so um, I was recovering from a knee surgery and I had my toddler. Uh, I'm here in Georgia by myself, so I had to wait like a week for my mother to be able to come after my knee surgery. Great, right? So I'm like running after a toddler on crutches. And another crazy thing happened was I started my cycle. And I was like, oh my gosh, I do not have what I need in order to deal with this. Great. So I'm like, okay, well, let me go to DoorDash or one of those platforms, you know, to have it just delivered to me. And then I looked at those delivery fees. Now, mind you, I'm recovering from a knee surgery, so I don't have the money for the uh, additional taxes and fees and the tip and everything else like that on top of my uh, feminine hygiene products that I need. And so, on top of that, you got cramps. <laughs> <laughs> and a toddler. So I'm just like, okay, you know what? Something's got to give. I said, how come they have things for like deliveries for dogs and stuff like that? But I don't see anything that's catered to just sending us our stuff every month because we're going to go through this every month. How come there's nothing like this? And I was like, hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> and then I was like, whoa, am I supposed to be doing this? And God's just like, yeah. That's exactly why I'm making you do this right now. Yeah. So that's how I got started. And from then on, I said, are you sure you want me to do this? Okay, well, all right, I'll try it out. You know, I'm not doing anything. I'm just healing from a surgery. So I just started doing my own research and I went from there. Never stopped. Okay. So now I got a bunch of questions about developing this business and this business model because it's unique and I'm a master marketer. Okay. Nice. So we're going we to put you to the task here. Now, you have all these products. Why would a person come to you to do this when they could, you know, stock up at the big box store? Okay, well, that's a great question. Well, a good reason to come to me, number one, you're supporting a small business. Number two, not only are you getting the products that you need, that you, need you can easily stock up on these things, but what if you no longer need those things? What if there's something else that you want to try? You know what I mean? Like, oh, I never knew about this product. I would like to try that. Well, here at Imani and Wellness, you're able to switch out products. If you see something else that you're interested in, you can say, hey, okay, well, this month, I don't need that. I want to try this instead. And I say, okay, that's absolutely fine. So it's the convenience and the customization of it that is like really the thing that stands out behind it. Also, we offer a uh, we offer different gifts every month from other women own small businesses so you're going to end up with something new every month and you're like oh I didn't know I needed this and even if it's something that you don't really care for I bet you someone else would you know and on top of that during that time of the month sometimes you feel your lowest you don't feel your best you may not feel the prettiest and things of that nature well guess what every month you're going to get an affirmation sent to you because I want you to remember how beautiful you are I want you to know how special you are even if no one's telling you in that very moment and sometimes that's just what we need to hear so yes, every month. Well, that's beautiful. Now you have some very unique uh, products there on the shelf that would be to my right, be to your left. Can you tell me what is that uh, device there? The red, it's on the shelf. It's red. It looks like a, a cup. 
a couple, oh, uh, no, those are actually uh, just roses over there. But in fact, we will actually be offering the menstrual cups, uh, the reusable items. We have the organic items and even the best sellers, the things that you grew up on, your mother's mother grew up on and things of that nature. So some people like the traditional things. Other people want to go more eco-friendly and we're going to be catering to all audiences. And that's very important because brains, what uh, female brains, uh, what you need to understand too is that you can have allergic reaction to some of these things. You know, you can be very sensitive down there. You can be irritated by, I know that there was a a, a disposable uh, uh, panty liner that I was using and it wasn't my friend. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it was allergic reaction or, you know, tampons. You want to be very careful with that. You know, there's a lot of history of people contracting different type of things, infections, um, irritations because of these different products. So this way, this gives you a variety of things, like she says, to try. Are you getting support as a small woman business from some of the big retailers like maybe Procter & Gamble, you know, that supply these in massive amounts? Are they looking at you as a uh, viable resource? Uh, not as of yet. In fact, I've actually reached out to them a couple times. I'm still waiting to hear back. Uh, it would be amazing <laughs> if I were able to, uh, you know, be to receive like a sponsorship or things of that nature from them. So right now, you know, I'm just waiting to hear back from that. And I'm just doing what I can on the okay, smaller scale. We're going to put the, the word out. There's a lot of things they can have you in a commercial, um, you know, because people don't want to necessarily look at it as a non for profit this is a profitable business and it is just like death and taxes. It's going to come. <laughs> exactly. Whether you like it or not, what has been the response to this type of service? You know, I've had people say, Oh my gosh, like, huh, they don't have anything like that. Or wow. I'm surprised that hasn't been done. Or I've even had said, Oh my gosh, I have just written, like I just wrote somebody and told them that they need to do this. And they were like writing like major retailers in regards to doing it. And they didn't get a response, you know, and then like, I just popped up and I was like, hey, I'll try. And they're just like, oh my gosh, I was just telling so-and-so that they need to do this. So it's like, it's, it's really great. I'm getting like a really good response in regards to it. And I'm like, okay, I guess I did hear the right thing. I'm on the right track with it, you know? Sure. And visibility and sharing that with people. There are, um, unfortunately, there are individuals or women that can't afford it. Absolutely. Or they don't have access to it. This Absolutely. would be a great gift giving item. But let me tell you my story. So I met the um, author of The Orange is the New Black. And we were talking. And as I was watching that on Netflix, I saw that the women had to go to the commissary and had to pay out of their commissary to have feminine hygiene products. I thought that was a basic right. Absolutely. They're only allowed like, oh, I'm sorry. They're only allowed like what, 12 pads and um, they, they can have up to 24 with permission. In terms of tampons, they have to work in order to get that. They're not gonna get that for free. So they basically have to ration their menstrual cycle products until they're able to, you know, afford it. And hopefully, you know, they're able to afford what they need or else they're going to free bleed, which is and not how they yeah, don't even understand what that, how that makes you feel as a human being. Exactly. I so cried. Let what, well, let me tell you what happened. Okay. So I said, oh, I know some people. So I go to some people at the big box stores and I said, you know, can you give me a couple cases of these? I want to support the women in the the jail here. Do you know that the jail sent them back to me? They would not accept them. They said they had to work for those. They had to be in their commissary. They were already pre-boxed. They weren't open. There was no, you know, it couldn't have been any drugs or anything facilitated in it. And I just thought that was so disgraceful. And I also turned you on to uh, a woman that is working in Africa to help these young African women with having feminine hygiene. They don't go to school for that week or that month because of what happens to them. 
they do not have the laundry facilities that we have that they're able to, um, you know, wash and, and dispose of them. So now they are working to get the, um, I don't know if they're a panty liner. Can you explain that to me? Are, is it a panty liner or a reusable sanitation type of thing? What are those? Yes, uh, actually, I, I, you know, briefly watched that interview. Um, in fact, they have the reusable panty, of course, and they also have the reusable pad. So the reuse, you know what, give me just a second. I can actually show you because I have some of those on hand. Okay, so they have the, re the reusable pad. And it's like this, as you can see, there's buttons right there, right? Okay. So you can easily snap this on, on your underwear and voila, they have a pad here. And then you're able to reuse them. You can wash them and then you have them again. So this is an amazing product for those who, you know, they can't afford those, especially out of the country. You can always wear it with a panty liner if needed and things of that nature. But yes, they're very absorbent. They're really, they're really nice, you know, and it actually, it's, it's not as, you know, it's not as icky as I thought it potentially could have been. No, this is like actually a lifesaver. It really is. Okay. All right. And sometimes women's flow is very heavy where they need a pad and a tampon. They Absolutely. can have, you know, medical conditions where they have fibroids or they have um, endometriosis, whatever. And this is, you know, it's embarrassing. Yes. You feel less than human. Um, sometimes there's an odor associated with it. So to be able to change that and feel clean and, and um, sanitized is amazing. So I had never seen those before. That's pretty neat. Absolutely. In fact, any product that I have, I've tried myself, you know, of course, our common ones like the tan packs and things of that nature. I think we've all used those, you know, but even the organics and the reusables. And I'm like pleasantly surprised with the reusables, you know, so I can see a lot of people beginning to lean towards those, you know, because they are eco friendly and because they are like probably a bit more healthier than some of the other products in regards to like things like toxic shock syndrome, UTIs yeast infections and you know to bring it back to what you mentioned earlier uh in regards to them having to stay home and stuff like that out of the country they're also doing it here you know and that's because of things like period poverty period poverty is affecting just about us globally you know what i mean if you don't have the funds for it you know um it's projected that they'll be making over 60 000, um, 60 billion dollars in the year 2030 and that's just targeting feminine hygiene products that's just that you know, of course, when it came to the jail, they look at it as like a profit. Why? Because 26 states consider feminine hygiene products as a luxury instead of a necessity. Wow. 26 states. So we know that it's not women that are saying things like this. You know, they're not the ones that's making this because, of course, they're not the ones that's going through it. This is something that we involuntarily go through every month. Some of us every other month, you know, things of that nature. But ultimately, we're not choosing to go through things like this. And you're considering this a luxury. You know, they're taxing our products with the pink tax, you know, so women are paying more for their products in comparison to our counterparts like men, you know, for our hygiene products, just because it's targeted towards a woman, like a woman's razor costs more than a man's razor. Right, right. <laughs> How right. is that, you know? Yeah, so and that, that's... Use it, and we don't use it like they use it every day. That's what I'm saying. So imagine with something that we have to go through in terms of, you know, our menstrual products, our feminine hygiene products, we need these things or else you do face things like that. You know, those who can't afford the feminine hygiene products, they're making makeshift pads and things of that nature. I even read somewhere that someone used a doggy pad, a doggy pad because they didn't have any pads. You know what I mean? So it's like you're, people are literally resorting to last met, like last resort measures, and those should not be last resort measures. So even though this is a for-profit organization, I plan on taking a, a, um, a percentage of the proceeds to go towards helping those dealing with period poverty, the women that are leaving prisons, those who are dealing with, uh, um, with homelessness, those who are in lower income homes, and those who are uh, LGBTQ. AI plus, <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Because you have to take into consideration those who are going to the grocery store, such as transgender men. They may not feel comfortable some, you know, having to deal with something like this already. So why should I have to go to the store, you know what I mean, in order to get these products when you can just have it delivered straight to you discreetly? Right, right. Or young ladies, you know, th there's a lot of, of single fathers. 
And that was the last thing I wanted to do is tell my dad, dad, you know, can you pick me up? <laughs> Number one, I didn't want him to know I was, you know, having my menstrual cycle at that particular time. But he goes in there and dumbfounded, trying to figure out what to do. It's uncomfortable. So this is really a great, great idea. And so I, I'm going to hand it off to you and I wish you much success. Let's ask you some fun questions about you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you weren't doing this, if this wasn't your passion project, what else would you like to do in life? I would be drawing drawing painting i'm a very artsy person um i actually just redid my daughter's room everyone's like oh my gosh she's only three like what but it's like i just i get so excited you know that's why i'm in my comfort space in fact you can see one of my halfway done paintings yeah. back there and that's literally i keep her up there because she's literally my reminder because this is where i used to paint everything you know but it's like i took everything else out but i left her because i'm like this is my why this is why I'm going through all that I'm going through and the tears and everything else like that, because this is new to me, you know, the entrepreneurship side of it all. But yes, art is my thing. Well, if you're an appliance in the kitchen, what appliance would you be and why? I would be a blender. Yeah. Everybody wants to be a blender. They like to be a blender. I want to be a blender because I, I want a little chaos. You know what I mean? Just, just like a little to, bit of chaos. Like to mix it up? No, I want to be the refrigerator. I just want to chill. <laughs> I just want to sit somewhere, chill, and if it's, it gets too heavy for me, then I just freeze you out. How about that? We'll oh, I like that. Oh, wait a minute now. I have to rethink my answer. <laughs> if you were a flower in the garden, what flower would you be? I love tulips because they just give off just calmness and just beauty. Like, not don't disrupt me. Don't bother me. Just look at me. I'm pretty. Don't don't bother me. You know what I mean? It's just like let me just be at peace. Got some. I've got some around here somewhere. I know I bought some for my husband. Men like tulips too. Ooh. That's, a, that, that's a, a great flower for them. If you had three magical wishes, Ivy, anything, what would they be? Oh, a village for my daughter. Because again, it's just me. So yeah, right now she's taking a nap. Thank goodness. But uh, a village for my daughter. Um, oh, funding for my business and help. More help. I have a few people that are volunteering to do things for me out of the kindness of their hearts. Oh my goodness. I love you guys so much. Shelly, Candy, Nolan, you guys are amazing. Thank you. Okay. That's wonderful. That is absolutely wonderful. What would you tell a 25 year old Ivy? Stay still for a moment. I'm going to look directly at you. Stay still and just be at peace and just listen to what your purpose is because you may have to pivot from what it is that you're doing and that's absolutely okay because you may find happiness along the lines, further down the line. Just stay still and listen. You got to turn up your listening skills, Brains. That's very good. If um, you were an animal, what animal would you be? Hmm. I were an animal. You know what? My little puppy over here looks pretty comfy right about now. I, th I think I'd be a cat. I would be a cat. I love you. A, <laughs> a dog is looking at you like, really, mom? <laughs> I would be a cat because it's like, I'll just come out when I want love. And then after that, eh, you guys know, don't expect too much from me because I'm a cancer. So I tend to go back in my shell sometimes. So, oh, okay. Yeah, the cat would be perfect. <laughs> me, I'm going to be the party animal. Oh. Oh yes, oh, yes, I'd be party animal. Oh, yes, I would come on out. What do you like or love about living in Georgia? I love that it's so calm. It is so calm. For me, it is, especially in the area that I live in. It's so calm. It's never loud unless like the high school has a game or something. But other than that, it's so calm. I'm from originally Illinois, so okay. it's not as calm there in comparison to here. That's what I love most. Okay. And what is one of your biggest challenges as a new entrepreneur? <sighs> Navigating entrepreneurship. <laughs> right. um, I'm, I'm new to it all. You know, I've been a nine to five employee since I began working and I never had dreams of being an entrepreneur before. So I'm used to structure and, you know, you tell me exactly what you need me to do. Okay, after that, just leave me alone. I have it, you know. But now it's like I'm literally setting my own schedules and I'm learning things as I go. So, yeah. 
Well, you know, a lot of times people get enamored with that big $25 word. Ooh, I'm an entrepreneur. Because that's the hardest hustle that there is. You've got to establish the business, have a business plan, be focused, get people to buy into it, get paid, pay the bills, re-up. You know, that's a, a African-American term for me and that <laughs> phrase is re-up. <laughs> But you have to do all these things and then start all over again. And then there's going to be downtimes. But what I can say to you is to be encouraged and enjoy the ride. Don't overthink it. When you overthink it, then you have drama. Already see the outcome. Already see your success. See yourself sitting at the beautiful long oak table and a big leather chair and windows all around and somebody coming in and handing you the papers on what your numbers are, how exciting, how you've been able to merge this, not only from Georgia, but now you're in California, Mississippi. Now you're in, you know, working with people in China to manufacture, I take that back, working with somebody in the United States, <laughs> to manufacture it <laughs> and send it over to Africa. Let's just keep it one on it. Yes. But all these things are important and they are to put on a vision board. But a vision board is not just to look at, it is a roadmap. Put some obstacles there because you don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. That's how you get better at it. Well, I'm really proud of you. I am. Uh, it's innovative. It's exciting. Brains, you know, if if I was still in that state, I'm not in that state now. I done, I done crossed over. <laughs> uh, but support her. You know, I'm going to put this out to some people that I know. This is a great, again, it's a great uh, gift for a young woman, a young girl that's 13, 14, 15 years old. She has a pretty box delivered to her with an affirmation, with her own little private things, you know, maybe a cute little bag that she can take it and put inside of her bag because it's very trying when you're going through puberty. You're ashamed. And I also like what you said about um, the unsheltered. Can you imagine living on the street? No shoes, sleeping on the cement, you're hungry, and then you have your menstrual cycle once a month, and you have to deal with that in a public bathroom, if you can find a public bathroom. So think about that, you know? Support her in every way that you can. Ivy, tell my brains how to get in contact with you. Absolutely. You guys can find me at www.iwellness.store and on all social media platforms being Instagram and Facebook for now. We will be getting a TikTok once my sister teaches me how to use TikTok. (laughs) Uh, You can find us at iwellness.co. And we're going to put all of our information at the back of the interview and at the show notes and we're going to be following your progress. Anybody that uh, is willing to invest angel funding in a brand new startup business right there contact me you know how we roll here on the edge all right (laughs) thank you so much ivy i wish you well thank you thank you bye brains